Hello, all the way from Camden in London. Chef Sam Burke here, and today we're going to be doing uh, something that I think is, is that fits well with this kind of a region, the Europe and uh, English region, with some beautiful true Aussie beef. So butters are coming back on trend. We've been doing some work back home in Sydney and Queensland and Melbourne, all around the East Coast, with uh, some some big groups on some butters uh, for steaks. So it's not all about peppercorn and gravies and jus and, and, and chimichurris as I've been known to do in the past, but we're doing something different here. We're gonna do a beautiful butter. And why not? We've got some beautiful French butter. So I thought, why not do that as an accompaniment of the steak? So with this beautiful creamy French butter when we cross the border today. So we're gonna put that in a little pot there. And what else I've got is some flat leaf parsley that I've just finely shredded there. And then I've done a bit of a, a mix of some fresh garlic, thyme and rosemary. All right, fresh garlic, thyme and rosemary, flat leaf parsley. And I like a bit of chili in my butters. All right, so I'll just put a bit of chili in there. And then some beautiful cracked black pepper on top of this beautiful French butter. And some sea salt. So that's all it's about, you know, this is a nice, if you've got salted butter, don't go wild on the sea salt because you're going to season your steaks as well. But this one here is, is, is unsalted, it's natural, it's cultured. We've added a bit of sea salt here today. So, the way we go, we're just going to mix that together with this wooden spoon. We've let the butter come to room temperature so we can mix this all together. So it's very important to let your butter come to room temperature. If you just get it straight out of the fridge, it'll be too hard and then you'll You'll get frustrated and you won't get a good end result, which is not what we want. But we want to kind of like churn that, and it's quite easy, it's beautiful. You know I'm a big man for Aussie produce, but I say, when in Europe and the UK, let's try and see what they're doing. So, but there's no way in the world, no matter where I am, I cook anything other than Australian beef. And we've got some beautiful Australian rib fillet here today that's going to accompany our butters. So... What we'll do is we're just combining that now, and I think I'll put a bit more of that garlic and thyme in. And we've added our cracked pepper, and I've added, and I've added a bit of salt too, because this is unsalted butter, and we've given that a real nice mix. We've got our butter here, and what I've done is I've got the cling film, and I've put it all over the board. And then I'll put it in one solid, kind of like a log here, okay? So then we pull the lip of our cling wrap up, and it would be a smart if I could cut that off. Right. So we pull the lip, lip of our cling wrap up, we roll it over, and we bring that together. All right, and then what you want to do, it's kind of like a giant kind of minty or a lolly. You roll that over again, all right, and then you roll it with your hands. You tuck your hands in, and you keep on rolling it, all right. And then you firm it out, and then you grab the two ends of the cling wrap, and you keep on rolling them out like that. So it can come nice and even. And don't be afraid to, to give it a good mould yourself, but this is the way I want it. So we're cling wrap it and we're turning it now, and we're turning it. And then what we can do, we can do a little knot at each side. Similar to a slip knot, push that straight in. Then you push that butter back. Straight again, push that knot all the way down, bang. So there's our beautiful butter there. Into the fridge for one hour. Well, if you haven't got time, you can put it in the freezer for half an hour. But that'll, we need, really need that to harden up. So we've got our butter here, and then I'm gonna put that into the freezer. We're gonna, we're gonna freeze it, then we're gonna take it out and serve it for our beautiful steaks up in the terrace. I'm telling you now, so this is grass-fed beef from Australia. So what I've done is I've just put a bit of oil on top uh, and it's just coming to room temperature and then we'll season it and cooking it. But have a look at this, this typical London over here. Today is spring, overcast, beautiful old buildings and I'm in heaven. It's my first Facebook video on the other side of the world. So here we go, Barbie's nice and hot. I'll give it a nice good dusting of salt. 
pepper. The steaks have come to room temperature. We've taken them out. And away we go again. Some rustic pepper there and salt again. Give them a really nice seasoning. Meat loves salt. Salt loves the meat. Beautiful steaks live here. 16,900 kilometers away from Sydney, from Parramatta, we have got some beautiful cube rolls. So we'll put that hood down, we'll let the heat circulate, we'll come back when we turn the steaks over. All right, we're back. We'll pull these up, we've got a nice char grill on them. And literally, we haven't cooked them for long at all because they're nice thin steaks, but beautiful pasture fed people. And people ask, what's the difference between pasture fed and, and uh, grain fed? Well, pasture fed, I think it's got a more earthy, buttery flavour. It's got a more stronger, robust flavour. It's got less marbling. So they've got di different characteristics. Um, and, and, you know, I love it. I love a good grass-fed steak. So, you know, uh, it's, it's individual preference. But grass or grain, they're both beautiful in their own way. But, uh, yeah, it's got that real nice, buttery, earthy taste. So we're just about to divulge on them. These steaks are just about ready. We'll take them up here and we'll rest them up the top. And look at that. I'll finish that down. And the beautiful thing about this barbecue, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of like the Weber Q kind of factor. The heat rises, comes back down and the smokiness goes through the meat. So it, it really helps with the cooking and gives a beautiful flavour. And that's about it. So we'll come back to you now. This is our beautiful Australian pasture fed beef all the way over here in Camden and London. So we'll come back to you now, we'll, we'll come back for our butters and then we'll wrap this bad boy up. Have a look at those beautiful, Saturday night, the girls are getting ready. This is London, love it. Come back to you. Oh, we've got some beautiful cos lettuce here, cucumber, some European feta. We've made a bit of an emulsion here with vinaigrette, touch of mustard, uh, olive oil. I like to add my dressing slow. If you put the dressings too fast, you can't take it out. If you put less in, you can put more in. So just, people tend to toss the salads too much. Just let it, it's called dressing for a reason. You dress it at the end. You don't mix it through, right? It's just nice and rustic. Here we go. Okay. And look at this steak. Look at the way that that has rested. Beautiful Australian pasture fed steak. Simple things done right, Australian beef. You don't have to muck around with it. You don't have to put sauce on it. We've got this beautiful butter here, this French cultured butter. One there, another there. And that will will, will melt in from the heat, heatness of the steak. And we can see it. Get this brush here. You can see that starting to melt in now. And it just gives it a nice glistening on your beef and adds flavor. Because don't forget, we seasoned it up there, and now we've got our butter on, so there's nothing else you have to do with it. So there it is. My beautiful chili European butter with parsley, thyme, rosemary, garlic, sea salt, a touch of chili. We've made a beautiful salad there. There's the perfect pasture-fed Aussie beef steak here in the UK. Looking forward to doing some great work here with... Uh, all of our embassies and our customers here in Europe and the UK. Stay tuned.